Well, let's pray as we get ready to go. Father, we just enter into the day. Lord, we're hungry for what you've got for us. And so, Lord, we just come uh, just eager, hungry. Lord, uh, just on the edge of our seats, so to say, just to receive, Lord, what you want to uh, put in, uh, pour in and instill on the inside of each one of us, Lord, as a body and individually, Lord. And so, so Lord, we don't look lightly at that, Lord. We put weight upon your word and what you have for us today. And, Lord, we eagerly just step in to receive what you have for each one of us right here, right now, set for today, Lord. You've been waiting since the foundations of the world to put this this, this word on the inside of us. And so, Lord, we just say, have your way in our lives. Lord, have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you guys know that we were created to have a personal relationship with our Heavenly Father? Isn't that awesome? That he's not so big and thinks he's so cool that he don't want to get to know us. But you know what? He created us. And he created us. He said, you are cool because I made you. And you're so cool. I want to get to know you and you get to know me more. I want to have a just talk back and forth one-on-one. Our our God is good. He wants to have a personal relationship with us. And did you know the devil hates that? He really does. He, He hates it when people, he hates it when the body of Christ, he hates it if you figure out that you can personally and directly hear from and talk to your heavenly father. The devil just hates that. What is it? It's, he, and he'll do things to try to screw that up. He'll, he'll try to put roadblocks in the way, and he'll try to lie to you and deceive you and stuff. What is it? When, when, a, when a country tries to fight another country, if they can break the communication of that country so they can't talk amongst themselves, man, the other guys have pretty much got the battle won because communication is just destroyed. And that's the same thing the devil wants to do. He wants us to, like, miss, uh, to understand or believe the wrong thing that we can't hear from or talk to our heavenly father and that's just not true and so what we're doing today is we're we're starting a new series we're gonna we're teaching on hearing God's voice isn't it cool we can hear from God yes. did you know he can hear you yes. Amen. we don't have to go hey <laughs> no we don't have to shout we'll learn that there's a still small voice someone that's close to you you can talk a little softer No, God hears from us, and we can hear him. And so today we're going to jump in, look at the word, get some word on this. We're going to get a foundation laid today. And uh, and I'm going to give you some examples of me personally. Uh, I don't know your example, so I'm going to tell mine. So, And so I'm going to give you some examples, uh, hopefully practical, that you can relate to your lives and, uh, and use as well. You know, the Christian life is simple. It requires hearing from God and faith. I love it. He just keeps things simple. Man, hearing from God in faith. Jesus said he is the good shepherd. What's a shepherd do? He leads, feeds, and protects, right? And Jesus said he is the good shepherd. Uh, You know, we can hear, we hear from him. He calls us by name. That's personal. And so it's up to us to obey. It's us to us, it's up to us to listen. Look over to uh, John 10, verse 2 to 6 as we get ready to uh, take off here. If I'm going to keep on track, I've got to keep a certain pace. So, Time's up. Now we're there. John 10, verse 2 to 6 says, But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them. Man, that's cool right there. And they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. The Bible is God speaking to me. The Bible is God speaking to you. Say that to yourself. The Bible is God speaking to me. Do you you believe that? All right, all right, all right, we can move on then. Man, we got to learn to hear his voice then. We got to learn to hear his voice. And did you know he's not going to lead us contradictory to his word? Man, the more we, that's why we got we to feed on his word. That's why we got to get in the word and get it in us and feed on it and, and, and dive into it. Because, because when, he, when he directs us and speaks to us and guides us in our life, he'll never lead us contradicting his, his word to us. And that's why it's so vital. It's, we got to know what this says. And, you know, people will roll their eyes sometimes. Man, you're, you're trying to tell me that the, the Lord is telling you to do what? Or he's, he's directing you to go where? You know, you 
you, you can't hear from God. You know, he, he speaks through tornadoes and earthquakes, you know, all that external disasters that kill, steal, and destroy. Oh. Yeah. Isn't that how he speaks, you know? And they're like, you can't hear from God. Yeah, I get more nervous from someone who says they can't hear or you can't hear from God than I do from someone who says they are hearing from God. And I know there's a couple ditches sometimes. You know, you'll get that person that never hears from God, and then you get the person that's like, God said to me this, this, and that. And you know what, man? And they missed it. They messed up. It was flesh. But just because us humans miss it and say God said this when he really did and at that time doesn't get rid of God really does speak to us. And he really does want to show us things and direct and guide us, right? Yeah. So we, we got to watch out for the two ditches. But we need to learn how he communicates. It's not external. And it's not mind, but it is spiritual. We got to learn how he communicates. Romans 8 verse 16 says, The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You know, God won't show you the whole big picture and he's going to show you step by step by step by step. Isn't it called a, we got to walk by faith? Man, that's what it is. I mean, if he told Mike Lopez Jr. in high school, look up the road 30 years from now, pow, there's the big picture. Go get it, tiger. <laughs> Mike Lopez as a junior in high school would say, bye-bye. Because it's too big, it's too audacious, it's just too scary. I mean, at the, I can't do it on my own, yes, but it's a walk of faith. What he does, he, show, he shows a step at a time. He's like, Mike, I need you to step here. All right, I, I can do that. Man, I can't do it on my own, Lord. That is huge at the time. It's going to take a step of faith, but Lord, I, all right, here we go. And he, and he goes, now I need you to step here, and I need you to step here. That All of a sudden, 30 years up the road, the whole while he's pouring in. He's, he's instilling some things on the inside that from here to here is too big, man. It is just like mind blowing. But I tell you what, he doesn't do that to us. He just says, let me step here by faith and let me put things on the inside of you. Let me, let me prepare you and equip you that, that now you're ready. I'm going to call you by faith again. It's going to be a big step. I need you to make this step. And now I'm, there I'm going to do some more work on the inside. He just loves to go in there and do surgery and do a little shifting and stuff on the inside, doesn't he? Yeah, big God. He's awesome, though. That's how he moves, though. Psalms 32.8 says, The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway. Did he say, I'll guide you along the so-so pathway? I'll guide you along the worst pathway? No, the Lord says, I'll guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. You know, if, 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 if we hire an advisor for our life, man, don't we want that person to be like right there by us? If somebody's going to guide us, if someone's going to advise us in our life, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my arm around the shoulder. I'm going to say, you know, where, where I go, you go, and where you go, I go. And man, we, we, I want to I wanna be able to hear from you. I want you to be able to speak into my life. I got to get the screw just right. It, it, there's a center point right here. You got to get it right there. Now we're good. <laughs> that lines up with the light. Man, if, if, if you got somebody guiding and advising you, man, you want to be close to them. You want to be having a personal relationship with them. You want to be hanging out and, and having them come over to grill out with hot dogs and burgers or something. You, you, want, you want to get to know them and be close to them. You know, this is, this is for all of us, y'all. Teenagers, it's for you. Middle-aged people, I'm middle-aged, right? <laughs> Older people, and everybody raised their hands in the room. It's for all of us, from young to old. We have to hear from him. You know, I was reminded as, as I was getting ready for this, and, and uh, I remember back when I was, man, a senior in high school, and I know some of y'all are saying, dude, you're old. That was year 2000, okay? So for all y'all saying, I'm old, there you go. And for all y'all, the rest of you saying, you're just a young pup. What did we already just clear up in the, just a second ago? This is for all of us. From young to old, we have to learn to hear from him. And I, was, I remembered back in senior year, I got to a point where, you, you know, we get to that question where it's like, I'm about to come out of childhood and step into adulthood. You know, come out of, mom tells me to be home by 10 o'clock at night, 
And I'm about to step into, well, I can probably come home whenever I want. You know, that childhood into adulthood. But I have to make some decisions. Am I going to school or am I not going to school? Am I going to step into the workforce or am I, am I not? You know, where am I supposed to go work? Where am I supposed to go to school? All these questions start fluttering through, fluttering through the mind. And, you, ever, you know, you can get nervous and scared right there. But really, I came to that same question we all face is God, I need to hear from you, and I need to hear from you for myself. I love my parents. I love my grandparents. I I love some of my, my mentors that are in my life. But Lord, I need to hear from you on this subject. And I need to hear from you for myself. You know, I looked, I looked back, and, and, You know, before that, I was hearing from them. I'm seeing it more clear now. But I was hearing from them. I had a I had a heart. I wanted to please him. I had a heart to please him. I wanted to put his things first. You know, we're not perfect, but the best I could, I want to put your things first, God. And and I remember I lived sensitive. That was one of the big things is I lived sensitive to the inward witness, that voice on the inside. It's like if we can make it simple, it's that green light, red light. It's like a piece of sandpaper. Can you all relate to that? Get get some good grit at like, uh, you know, 60 grit sandpaper. You know, it's just that rough stuff. And it's like, the best I could, I lived sensitive to the inward witness on the inside. I got to the point where I had to make that decision. God, I need to hear from you. What move, what step do I got to take? But really, he was speaking to me before that. I just came to a point that it was like, I need to hear from you now. And, And I haven't always listened at 100%. And neither have you. So there you go. But you know what? I haven't listened at 20% to him either, though. I've done a better job than that. But, you know, I look back, and everything I was involved in, I would look at it in, 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 in the light of it being purposeful. I looked at it in the light of being cautious with everything I got involved in. I was involved in band. I was involved in sports. Does this sound familiar, guys? You know, I was involved with church. You better be. I encourage you. It's a place to go and get poured into and slash. Y'all got to pour out. You got something on the inside. You got to give as well. You know, and I was a, I worked as janitor at a factory in Piasta. I was a hard worker, you know, it's hot in the summer times. And and so I did all these things, but everything that I would allow into my life, I don't know where I, I'm not going to get on to where I learned this. I I don't know. It's just, I got it. I'm glad I did is I was cautious and I would listen to the inward witness. If I got involved in sports, it's because, man, it just, it felt right. I didn't have that scratch on the inside. You know, if I got involved in band, it was like, it just felt right. It's like, go ahead, teach me, pour into me. I was in band from fifth grade to 12th grade. You know, all along, they're just teaching you, teaching you how to, you know, do paradiddles and, you know, tempo and, be able to play soft and play loud. Not either they're pouring into you. But you know there's a lot of good stuff we can be involved in out there. That doesn't mean we're supposed to be involved in it. But I look back. Did you know he's got a plan and a purpose for each one of our lives? Did you know he has a reason for you to be here? Did you know that he sees the end way back over here yet? Did you know God is like an awesome chess player? I stink at chess. Why? Because I only think one move at a time. It's your turn. Move the pawn. And then my mind wanders. Good chess players see the game before it even starts. They go, I'm going to move here, and he's going to move here, and I'm going to move here, and they're going to move here, and I'm going to move here, and they're going to move here. All of a sudden, I win, and the game hasn't even started yet. That's like God. He is the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the A and the Z, right? He he sees the end before the game even began. Did I say that right? I got myself all messed up. I didn't know what I, where I was at or what I was speaking. He saw the end before it even began. But if we learn to listen to the inward voice, him speaking to us, 
with everything we do? We won't pack ourselves so crazy that things pull us away from God instead of bringing us to God. That things weigh us down so heavy that we don't have time for his things anymore. I look back and it's like, yeah, I see it. Man, you were pouring, band felt right. I'm just telling you my story. Can I just tell you my story? Take it and relate it to y'all self, you know. Obviously, maybe it's not band. I, band was right because he was pouring, on the, pouring in and teaching and strengthening and, and equipping. Why? Because he, I didn't know, but I'd still be playing drums to the day. Yeah, I still draw from things I learned from sports. But I tell you this, mark this, is when something starts to steal more time than it deserves, it's time to cut it off. Because I put God things, and we need to put God things ahead of anything else. Yes, I was in sports, track, and cross country. But the day track took too much of my time from him is the day I cut it off. Amen. Yes, I was in track all the way up till sophomore year. I was decent at it. But the day it started to pull me from church and pull me from God, and it didn't have anything else to put on the inside of me, is the day I said, okay, I hear from you. You're done. Because I put his things first ahead of anything else. And the day something else tries to take place in front of him and the, th the purpose he's got and the things he's trying to put on the inside of me is the day it dies in my life. It has no more place. There's nothing wrong with track. It's not from the devil, you know, but, but it just didn't have a place anymore. And we got to be men and women enough to say, I'm done with you. Amen. We have to be led in all we do. And I tell you what, you'll fight people on that. But I want to. But it's good. But I love doing. We have to be led in all we do. Things we're involved with should pull us towards God, not pull us away from him. Man, we don't need a reason not to do something. We need a leading to do a thing. I don't need a reason not to do it. I need a leading to do a thing. Man, we need to learn to hear from him for ourselves Man, too many people out there are messing it right, missing it right here where it's, man, I want to do this. Or it's a good thing. Maybe it is a good thing. Or, or somebody's telling, man, you, you need to do this. You need to get involved in this. You need to do this. You need to do that. No, maybe you should do something, you know, do it. But I, I can't do it. We, we need to stop and we need to hear from him for ourselves. Romans 8, 14 says, for all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. Any believers in the house? For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Man, being born again, God's Spirit is within you. Man, he tells us exactly how he leads too. Look over to Romans 8, uh, 8, 8 to 11. You didn't close Romans, did you? We were over there before, weren't we? Yeah, we were. No, that was John. Maybe you weren't at Romans. You were at Romans? Good job. I think I was there too. Romans 8, 8 to 11 he says exactly how he leads. Man, that's why those are, who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit. If you have the Spirit of God living in you, man, being born again, the Spirit lives in you, right? And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Amen. And receiving Jesus, the Holy Ghost, comes and lives and dwells Amen. in you. And he is our teacher and he is our guide. Is he not? John 16, 13 says, When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. That's what we need to know in every decision of our life is we need to know the truth. We need to know what to do and what not to do. In every decision we make, in everything we do, in everything we step into, or what, we need to know the truth about it. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Man, God wants to tell us things. He wants to show you things. He wants to guide you. He wants to direct you. He wants to steer you in the right path and the best path for each, each one of our 
our lives. Man, isn't that like a parent? I'm a parent now of four. <laughs> One, two, two. I do roll call when I get in the car. I don't know. Something about when you get past three and you get four, it's like roll call. <laughs> here, 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 here. I don't want to be that parent that forgets a kid. <laughs> Will not be me. But what's a parent want to do? A parent's heart for their child is, I will not leave you. I don't want to forsake you. I am here for you. I want to show you things. Man, if you let me, I want to direct you and guide you and help you, you know, make right steps in your life. Help you do what, what I might have slipped up, you know, in that dumb times and, and messed up. Let me help you out. Man, that's the, that's the heart of a parent, isn't it? And that's what God is wanting to do. You know, the enemy hates it when we learn that we can hear directly and personally from our heavenly father, he will do anything he can to stop that, to confuse that, to cloud that. He'll bring lie after lie after lie after lie. And so we have to, we have to cast that lie after lie after lie after lie down. We better know this. If we learn how to hear and obey, then we're going to have it made. Yes, amen. If we learn how to hear and obey, look over to John 2, 5. And now we're, uh, Jesus' mother, they're at the wedding, partying it up, man, having fun. What did she say? She said, but, but his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Man, whatever he says, do it. If we learn to hear and obey, life will get brighter and brighter. We'll have it made, right? But I tell you, if we continually ignore and resist him, Mike, do this. I don't want to. Mike, do this. I don't want to. Mike, do this. I'm resisting you. That's stupid, isn't it? Just sounds dumb even as an analogy. God, I resist you. <laughs> If we continually resist and ignore his leading and his direction, his voice will become less clear, more cloudy. It's almost like a radio station, not quite on. You know, got all that staticky. We don't want that, man. I want to clearly hear as he advises and he guides and he directs and says, stop, I better have had that channel on. Because I want to hear when he says stop or go or move left or move right, right? right Man, some personal times for me, when I heard from him, like I said in the beginning, I can only use personal times. And so these are some things that clicked with me. Take them, man, and apply them to your life. Let, it, let, it, let, let the Holy Spirit just sh reveal things in you to make it personal. But these are some things in my life that were it, where he, he, he led me and guided me, and, and they were going to be steps of faith. I mean, he wants to be involved in the little things and the big, the big things. And these are some steps of faith. When I moved from Farley to Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, a little town of a thousand and go 11 and a half hours away. Some of y'all are like, that's not a tough move, man. I've done that 15 times in my life, man. <sighs> Whatever. Dude, I was a little punk kid, 18 years old. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a car down there. I didn't have a house. I had no friends. I knew nobody. And all I knew was to be under the protection of my mom and my dad in a town of a thousand, Farley. You know, and he moved 11 hours away. Serious, Lord? I was thinking maybe NICC. You know, that's, that's 10 minutes away. You know, isn't that, isn't that safer? And he's like, no, 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 no. I, I, I need you to make this big step of faith. You know, I remembered another time when, just six years ago, when we were in Detroit, and you said in first service, we, we, we have two kids at the time. Don't laugh at me, y'all. And we had, I had a wife, and we had, we had two kids. And God said, drop everything and go. Leave your job of 10 years. Go to a place with no job. Move your family. Two youngsters and a wife. Man, it's one thing if you miss it and you're by yourself. And it's just you and God. Lord, I'm sorry. Okay, let's get back on track. It's another, I don't know, at least anybody else feel the same way? Man, if I miss it and I got a wife and two babies with me, I better be hearing right. 
but it was going to take a step of faith. You know, I, I was reminded when I, when, when I got, we got married, you know, we were dating. It's the only, only girl I ever dated right there on the front row. I know, shucks. <laughs> 15 years as of September 26. So it's coming up. I'm married up. Yep. She's beautiful. But you know what? We, 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 took, we took a week off of dating. Not when you're married. Don't take no weeks off. We were dating. We said, yeah, where, where's this going? Where's this going? And we got alone. We said, Let's just, we're going to take a few days and, and hear from God. We need to pray. Why? Because we needed that inward witness. We had to hear from him. You know, there's some times that, that I missed it. And when, when I made the move from Michigan to Iowa, I jumped a year early. I quit one of my jobs. Man, talk about walking out the door Friday afternoon and everything on the inside saying, you're a knucklehead and you were wrong. And calling the boss on Saturday morning and leaving a message on the answer machine saying, I will take anything you got Monday. I'm coming back to work. Because it's timing is just as important as knowing where you're going. You need them both. You have to be hearing from God on where to go and when to step to go. I was a year early. Another time was when I signed for an apartment and it was wrong. Let's get practical. Man, it was, I signed, I, we, we moved back here. We were living with somebody at the time and it was like, okay, it's time to get our own place. And we went to go get an apartment, and it was the wrong place. And you, Have you ever been in a bad mood before? <laughs> Man, I was grumpy. I was hot. I was living in the flesh at the time. And everything on the inside of me was saying, don't sign it, don't sign it, wrong place, wrong place. I resist you, God. I'm mad. <laughs> I paid for it. We got out of it and didn't go. Within 24 hours, I'm calling, and I go home that night, and everything on the inside is that 60-grit sandpaper. I have a choice right there. Do I not listen and just continue to move in and do my thing? Or do I hit the brakes right there, suck up my pride, Make the phone call and say, I'm wrong. Whatever I got to pay, I'm not coming. Step back. All right, Lord, what direction? Same with the move when I was a year early. When you tell your boss and you quit your job, when you tell church you're going to be leaving and you'll be stepping down from drums and whatever volunteer spots, when you're telling family members and da-da-da-da-da, and then you do it and you're wrong, you hit the brakes. There is nothing else to do but hit the brakes, pay whatever price you got to, step back, and say, all right, Lord, now where? I knew when I was right and I was on, and I knew when I missed it. Why? Because of the inward voice, the still small voice on the inside. That's how he led me when I was in middle school and high school with just stuff like band and sports. That's how I was led when I came to senior year and he said, move 11 hours away. That's the same voice, the Holy Spirit on the inside that, that told me to move from Michigan and come to Iowa. It's the same voice when I said, who should I marry? And it's the same voice that said, don't sign the paper for the apartment. And it's the same voice that said, don't do this because you're too early. But I knew by just having a heart to put his things above anything I had, a heart to put him first, a heart to be sensitive to what I was feeling on the inside. And that's the Holy Spirit saying, go, 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 or don't, 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 don't. But We've got to listen, don't we? Man, there's two ways to live. We can live in the flesh or we can live in the spirit. The flesh leads to death, but the spirit, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Romans 8, 14 says, for all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God and the enemy has tactics. And so we shouldn't be ignorant of his, uh, his tactics and his little tricks. The spirit of the Lord will lead you to do something. It's going to take faith. 
just like any of those moves in my life, and you can relate whatever it is to your life, but the Spirit of the Lord, he'll, he'll, the Lord will say, step here, do this, move here, do whatever, whatever it is, and he'll lead you to do something that's going to take faith, and immediately, I guarantee this is what's going to happen, is the enemy will come in, and the enemy will come in with fear. It's, God will say, I need you to make this step, and the enemy will come in with fear. And it'll sound something like, I can't afford this. I don't know how to do that. I'm not good enough. There's no way that could happen. Does that sound so familiar? I know I got some believers in the house where God has spoken into your life, and, and he said it's going to take a step of faith, and instantaneously, every time, the enemy will come with stupid lies that sound like that. Amen. And if we bow to fear, our miracle is just aborted. We have to overcome the fear and be led by the Spirit. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, for, the, for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and of self-discipline. Man, fear is not in your genes. Amen. Fellow believer, fear is not in our genes. Amen. He's got a plan. He is calling us to things. He's calling us to step into things. And fear has nothing to do with it. It's not a part of us. It's not a part of our DNA. Man, power, love, and self-discipline is in our DNA. And when God says to move and he says to do this or, or speak this or, or step here or step there, we move. Amen. But millions are missing it. Millions don't believe they can hear from God personally and directly. And this is where the body of Christ will get out of whack. It's because they'll just do their thing. God will say, go, or do this, or do that. And immediately the enemy will come in with questioning and fear and doubt and the big twos. I'm too pretty, I'm too ugly, I'm too rich, I'm too poor, I'm too little, I'm too tall, I don't know. Just the big twos. Man, we walk on water. It's not by our ability. We step out in faith and do what the Lord's directing us to do. It's not by, if it's up to us, man, we were probably had no idea. We didn't know to go that way, but when he directs us, it's going to take a step of faith, and we can't do it on our own, but if we, if we step out by faith and we shove that fear out of the way and say, all right, Jesus, my eyes are upon you, so I'm going to step out of the boat, and I'm going to walk on water, and I'm not going to look around at all the fear and all the questioning and why it's impossible for me to walk on water, isn't it? Yeah, on my own, but if I keep my eyes on Jesus, we can boldly just walk forward. So I'm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is your shepherd. What's a shepherd do? Lead, feed, and protect, right? We're talking about leading today. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, right bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. We don't move by fear. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You're, you're, uh, you honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. We see leads me, leads me, he leads me. Man, good things are following us, and good things are overtaking us because we're letting him lead us, and we're following him, isn't it? Proverbs twenty twenty seven says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. It doesn't say the body of man. It doesn't say the mind of man. It doesn't say the physical senses of man. It says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. Man, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. God will guide us through our spirits. Woo. Come on. God will guide us through our spirits. Are we not made in the likeness and image of God? God is spirit. We are spirit. We are spirit. We have a soul. We live in a body. Now, I'm beautiful. I'm fearfully and wonderful. I'm, I'm sorry, I got off track. You better think you're beautiful. You know, I'm not surprised when my phone gets phone calls and text messages. Are you guys? Pretend this is my phone. I don't have my phone. They make them this size nowadays, and you pull it out. You're, you're not surprised when it gets a phone call or a text message, are you? No, because that's what it was made for. Man, we were made to commune with our Heavenly Father. 
Why should we be surprised when we hear from him? Amen. And we, we can hear from him and we can talk to him and, and he'll answer us back. Man, we were made for that. Primary way God will guide us is through our spirits. I said the primary way. Psalms 32, 8 says, The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you, and I will watch over you. Ephesians 5, 17 says, Therefore, do not be a knucklehead. Oh, wrong version. Hang on. We're in the ESV version. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. God expects us to know. God expects us to understand. He expects us to follow, and he expects us to obey. He expects it. Where did it ever change then? Where did it ever change that we can't hear from him personally and directly? It never did. All right, well, if it never did then why are so many confused, saying the wrong thing, looking for answers from the wrong thing in the wrong way in the wrong place? If it's never changed, then why are so many off? Why are so many doubtful that they can actually hear and are supposed to hear and understand? He hasn't changed. The Bible's full of people directly and personally hearing from the Lord, isn't it? From Old Testament to New Testament. Man, we see Paul, the Lord spoke to me and said, go to this city or go to that. Don't go there, but go over there. We look over in Acts 8.29, the Spirit told Philip. Acts 10.19, while Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him. Man, we're, God doesn't change. He wants to speak to you personally. He wants to show you things, help you make steps in your life. He actually wants us to hear this word today, not forget it, go home. And almost our prayer becomes, Lord, open me up. Examine my heart, examine my life. And I want, you to, I want you to point out, Lord, everything that is in my life, everything I'm involved in, everything I'm doing, maybe stuff I'm not doing, I'm supposed to be doing. Lord, and I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to say, why is that here? Is that just a good thing? Or Lord, is, did, is that supposed to be here? Because if it's not, Lord, what's, oh, that's right. You did tell me to do that. Yep, hang on. Yep, you told me that one too. Okay, forget that. Now, I don't know where that came from. Woo, that's kind of moldy too. That's been there a long time. I forgot that was there. He's wanting us to go home and say, Lord, search me. Examine me. And he wants to show us things and direct us and speak to us personally. Man, I look back. When I, needed to hear, when I need to hear from God, what are some basic things that I do? I hope these help you. You know, if you Google this, you might find somebody that says 24 ways to hear from God, 13 ways to hear from God, five ways to hear. I don't know who's right. Is the person with three ways or 24 ways? I don't know. How many ways does it take? I don't know. I got three ways. These are three things that I do. You, you want to be happy doing in your life if you want to consistently be on track hearing from the Lord. Number zero, this isn't one of them. Relax. Can you just... Lord, it's a big decision though. I can't screw this up if I miss it. I just woke some of y'all up in there. Y'all felt the same way. Just relax. You can hear from them. And he wants to tell you what to do and help you. So step zero is relax. Number one is just draw near. Draw near, man. Get in his word. Get in the Bible. This is his voice 
from Genesis through Matthew and John and Ephesians all the way to Revelations, man, it is his voice. And it is, it's training. Man, we get in the word, feed on it, get it on the inside of us. It's training that when he speaks something else, we'll recognize that it's the same voice and we'll know to follow it. Man, we, we get in the word and begin feeding on his word because this is him speaking to us. That when he says, Mike, I need you to move from Michigan to Iowa. Well, I don't see Mike move from Michigan to... You guys got that in your version? I didn't have it in my version. But I tell you what, I had this on the inside of me and I fed on his word and I got in his word and studied his word because it's God speaking to me. That I'm getting to know his voice that it, just like a mom knows a baby scream in a store where they get lost, and it's like, help! I don't know, us guys might not be tuned into this all the time, but moms can go, that's my baby's cry. That's my baby's cry. You know, it's the same thing. Is we'll get to know his voice that when he says, Mike, move here, I'll say, I hear you, Lord, because I know that voice. I know that voice, and I know to follow that voice, and a stranger's, I will not follow, Right? And the enemy will try to mislead us through our flesh, but we're not going to listen. As, as we get more familiar with God's word, it'll become more difficult to deceive us. That's why the devil doesn't want you to own one of these. That's why the devil doesn't want you bringing one to church on a regular basis. Because there's something about opening the word and getting in and reading it for yourself because we start getting in some bad habits. You know, the devil doesn't want you to get this on the inside of you because if it's, if it's on the inside of you, it becomes harder to deceive you. What is pastor's example with a $100 bill? We don't study the wrong $100 bill to, that we know what it looks like when it comes. No, we study the right $100 bill that when a fraud one comes, a fake one comes, we just go, something ain't right with that. Right. That don't look right. That don't smell right. That don't taste right. That don't look, you know, whatever. That, that just ain't right. Number two is here. We got to listen. We got to listen. Man, seek his will in all we do. What is that? That's being Mike Lopez and going to Swiss Valley, maybe. I don't know. That's the prayer closet. What's the Bible saying? You know, get in your prayer closet. What is it? It's getting in, shutting the door to every other voice, every other noise, every other distraction, every other opinion. Getting in and shutting the door and saying, I'm here to, I'm here to hear from, I want to hear from you, Lord. I'm listening. Whatever you say, I'm here to hear it. I don't need to hear anything else. I'm, he I'm here to hear from you. Is that sentence right? Man, it sounds weird. Every time I try to say it three times. I'm here to hear from you. It's the best I can do, y'all. Listen to God. Number three, on near, hear, and do. And what's the Bible say? Be willing and obedient. You'll eat the good of the land, right? We don't want to just be, Lord, I am willing to do whatever you want me to do, and then you, you don't ever do it. It does no good to, Lord, all right, fine, I'm going to do it, but I am not willing. No, the Bible says if be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Lord, whatever you want to do, whatever you want me to do, let's go. Come on. Come on. Lord, whatever you want, because I know you want the best things for me. So if I'm in a spot where I'm, I don't see it, I'm not even there yet, Lord, get there quick. Because he's always got our best interest in mind. And he sees the end from the beginning. And so we need to get in and be willing and obedient quick. He's faithful, isn't he? That's good for today. Isn't that what Peter did? Lord, what do you want me to do? Jesus said, step out. Okay. And he was right there, wasn't he? But it takes a walk of faith. Be sensitive to the inward voice. Get very good at hearing from him. You're hearing. But if you need to, step back. And if not, keep walking with him by faith because he's got you. Father, we just thank you for, for, for what, you're, what you've put on the inside of us today. 
Lord, we choose to be doers of what you're speaking to us. And so, Lord, truthfully, we just say, have your way in our lives. Lord, we'll be good ground to receive what you're speaking to us. Lord, we'll be in the right heart that we say, we're yours. Lead us. Lord, and we'll be quick to obey because, Lord, it's guaranteed that when we do, things will get brighter and brighter and brighter. And you'll use us in a great and mighty way for your glory, Lord. And we thank you for it. Guys, I don't want to end without giving this opportunity. Everybody's head down, eyes closed. Just kind of a personal thing between each one of us and God today. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, uh, I want to give that opportunity this morning to introduce you to my best friend. I tell you, you you don't want to leave out of here today uh, learning about hearing God's voice but not having Jesus on, uh, on the inside of you as your personal Lord and Savior. It says in Romans 10, 9, and 10, if you say with your mouth and believe in your heart, Jesus is Lord and Savior, you'll be saved. So if you've never done that and you want to do that this morning, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Nobody's looking around, but if that's you this morning, can you just raise your hand really fast so I know who I'm praying with? Go ahead. Cool. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to all pray this together. Repeat after me. Father God, thank you for sending your son Jesus. He died on the cross for me, but he rose three days later. And he lives, and he was victorious. Jesus, be my Lord and Savior right now today. I receive you. Amen and amen. Amen. He's good, isn't he? Hello, and thank you for joining us this week. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, I'd like you to prayerfully consider partnering with us financially so we can get the word of God to more and more people. We really do pray that this ministry has been a blessing to you. And if you're in this area, next Sunday at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, come on out and join us. If you're not in the area, then please join us again online next Sunday. Thank you again and God bless you.